Hello guys, this is Al from Mobile Suit Channel. Welcome to a new episode. Today I'm going to show you how to install Sterling PDF. Again, guys, all the information links in the description below, including the link for my gist with ready made copy and paste code when you're going to install on Portainer, you know, on Docker using Portainer. Right? So all the information, as I said, is here, right? Everything can be easily be accessed. And it's a lot of things you can do with Sterling PDF. I already got a copy installed on my Docker. Let's go and jump in. Once you install it, there are many different ways you can do without logins, with logins. I done it with logins. And as you can see from the code, I have added this environment that will allow you to log in and add your own password login and password again you can use just the two on top if you want to and automatically will generate a login and password let me try to find here the information that you need let me see if i can find it so technically the first two will use the pre-made login password and but by adding the those two variables so you can add your own login and password technically and there we go we got the login authentication as you can see by adding docker enable security changing that to true and security enable login to true it will automatically add the username admin and the password sterling by adding those two extra variable as you can see from my guest you can add your login password from the beginning again it is if you don't going to use this, those two lines here, make sure you change, of course, your login and password. All right. I will do that as well, just in case I will put something as I have here, for example, and then change the password once you are inside. Okay. That's what you want to do. But anyway, let's go back to the Sterling PDF and let's have a look around what you can actually do. Here are all, are all the tools. You can do PDF multi-tools, merge, split, rotate, image to PDF. Again, you can use PNG, JPEG, GIF, and everything can be converted to PDF, right? You can add an image to the PDF. You can change the colors and contrast, add uh, page numbers. You can crop a PDF, PDF to image, Again, PNG, JPEG, and GIF, or GIF, or whatever you want to say. You can organize the pages inside a PDF. You can, you know, you can move it around. You can add watermark. You can remove other passwords, remove um, items within the PDF. I presume this is what it is. I'm wanting pages, for example. You convert PDF to uh, docs, PNG, XLS, PPT, text. And there are so many others, other available options, right? You can compress it, you can change the metadata. As you can see here, uh, there's loads of it. The most important one I think I like the most, you can actually now repair a broken PDF. Many times I had a PDF was broken, I, you know, and you get fed up and think, you know, yeah, whatever, you know, I'm not going to do it. And again, I'm not going to download it. So now you can actually repair it in no time right this is how simple it is and as you can see there are many others you can actually use here is the pdf mini tools you already got most of the stuff here on your uh, menu but you can go back to the main page where you can find all the items right now i can see there is a um, option of dark mode and light mode Again, here is favorites. One of those ones you can favorite it, as you can see here. Uh, there we go. And when you go here, you got those ones that I have added, right? Here you can change your language. Here we got the settings. Even though, uh, you know, very simple, right? There are updates available. Again, you can update. And again, if we go back to the just make sure you, all, you always got latest all right so that's very very important on my portainer for example um i don't have here there is a, a code perhaps i'm going to do another video about it when you, there is a watchtower where you can actually add this little container that 
everything has latest at the end. If anything changes, this container will auto update every single container, including Portainer. That's how good this is. All right. Now let's go back to Sterling and let me press X. You can do searches of any of the uh, tools. All right. Page operations. You can easily access from here. All the conversions are right here. And as you can see, they're much better lined out. Again, you can click here or you can go on the main menu. Security, add password, remove. Again, we got some miscellaneous, whatever. You can sign up, flatten, repair, so on and so forth. This is how easy it is. Now, let's go back to Portina for a second. Uh, what I done and what you can do, once you go to the my gist, Copy the lot, change what you need to change. I have changed my port because 8080 is already being used. So let's go back and let's have a look here. Let me click on that and let's go to the editor. Now, what happened is you paste here all the information again about the last two, or again, you can actually, the original, I think, let me go back here. The original, the one I copied it from, right? As you can see, I changed all this. It only comes with one environment, and that is a security false, right? Docker enable security. So technically, when you go to the URL, you go straight to this panel, all right? You are not going to a login page. Now, if I sign out, once you do the way I done it here, all right, you will get this and all you got to do is just type admin and the password let's click on that and the password again just in case you don't remember you can go back to your uh list here again again this is the gist but just in case you can go on a portal and just copy this one here all right paste that and assign it again there we go we're back in now let's go back to portina again you on the stack you paste and you deploy here it says update the stack but when you do it for the first time let's go back to the stack it will be add stack the name in this case for me will be sterling pdf again you can have the same name if you want to and you can actually copy and paste this and once you finish make again make sure your port is not used 8080 otherwise change it again here you should change it with your own directories all right now you can leave it like that if you wanted to you know it will still work you know uh, but again make sure you put it in the right place you want to put it okay uh you welcome to use mine but again i use everything on docker here i'm using open docker and the name of the app so all the apps are have their own directory in the home docker directory okay once you're happy with that all you got to do is deploy the stack I didn't put the name. I'm going to put something there. As you can see, deploy the stack. Once you deploy it, it didn't take long, really, and maybe a couple of minutes. Once you, everything is done, I'm going to say, uh, are you sure you want to leave? I'll say yes. And as you can see, here we got that. And I press on the logs, and I had a look what is going on. When it's ready, it's going to say to you, navigate to HTTP localhost. In this case, it's going to be your IP of your docker and the port number that's 880 your port number has been changed again mine would be 8011 i think yeah 811 and that's it it means everything is ready so that's how simple it is to install it and again you can do a lot of things more information you will be find on the on the github right on the page or you can go i think they got um don't have the actual link here. I think it's also on a Docker Hub. I'm not sure. If I find the information, I'm going to add the link in the description. Otherwise, you know, you can find all the information here, really. All right. And you can see optional login authentication. All I have to do really do here. Custom download options. Again, all the examples are here. Yeah, you can find all the information you need about the actual settings. All right. And that's it. That's how simple it is, guys. So anyway, guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you next time, as usual.